It's another beautiful day in East Tennessee. I'm going to show you today how you should have never paid one dime toward any electricity bill ever in your life. You have a device in your home that proves that and shows you that the laws of thermodynamics are actually being violated every time you use this device. What is it? That's right. The microwave. Every time you open this device, you actually generate more electricity than is coming into it. First of all, word to the wise, if you decide that you're going to tear apart a microwave, use extreme caution. This is the magnetron. This is where the high voltage electricity produces the radiation waves. Caution, high voltage microwave radiation. And if you do open up a microwave, the first thing you want to do is take an insulated screwdriver. And you want to short out this by connecting the screwdriver to both sides of this. This is a capacitor and it's able to hold 21,100 volts down to 2100 volts. What happens is your microwave takes 110 volts and runs it through this voltage intensifying circuit. This circuit is nothing complicated. It's heavy as all get out, but this is just uh, enamel coated magnetized copper wire. And your 110 volts runs through this circuit and when it comes out on the other side, it is 2,000 volts. So don't talk to me about the laws of thermodynamics that says that you cannot create more energy than you put into a device. Every time you turn on your microwave and heat up your soup beans, you are generating 2,000 volts from 110 volts. Now, show you something else very fascinating. This is a synchronous motor. What is it? It's the turntable. It's the turntable that goes in your microwave. This is geared down so that it transforms 110 volts and spins this knob at four revolutions per minute. What you can do is take this and connect a voltmeter to it. And you can spin it and generate electricity. I'm gonna cut the voltmeter on here. Let you see we're not connected to anything else. Gonna have to change the range on this. So it will pick up. There we go. Zero volts. Now, I'm going to spin this motor and let you see the voltage that is created here. Connecting the wires, let you see it one more time. And when I spin this, it produces electricity. Yep, that was 152 volts, 240 volts. As you can see, there's no decimal. 245, 277. So because this synchronous motor is geared down so tightly, you can spin it backwards and generate a substantial amount of electricity. This, I just took the knob off that turns your table, and this has a slot. You could build a wheel or a huge circle out of wood or any other material and attach this to this with a slot in it like that's in your turntable and you could spin that s circle and generate a substantial amount of electricity run it through the voltage intensifying circuit and then run it through a capacitor 
store it in a capacitor. I mean, one good spin and you've got six, seven, eight hours worth of energy, depending on how much energy you use at your home. Just out of simple pieces that's in your microwave. The capacitor, look how small this thing is, and it will hold 21,100 volts. And we look at the big clunky lead acid batteries that we have now on vehicles. That is old technology, and we shouldn't be using it. There's so many other things that we can use that's better. The capacitors is where it's going to go to. And I'm going to show you something else. Look at this. This is a, a little device that creates electricity from movement of water. That's right. You could connect this to your water pipe and generate electricity. That's just me blowing through it. It generates, I think, 12 volts on this depending on how much pressure you have and it'll vary. But this is a very small device. If this was geared down to something like your synchronous motor, you could generate a substantial amount of electricity. But my point is, how many of these could you put in line and just create and generate electricity off of your running water every time that you cut your water on pressure builds and flows out? You can use a water pump that is reversible and generate electricity from flowing water, just like they do at hydroelectric dams. All of this stuff is simple. The amount of power that you could generate off of just capturing your rainwater and running it through a pump that will generate electricity or a turbine that will generate electricity would easily power your home and probably a couple of your neighbors. It's time that we begin to look at alternative energy seriously. It's time that we begin to set up devices to power our homes. I mean, this is something that you use on a daily basis. And people still believe that the laws of thermodynamics cannot be violated. You've got to be kidding me. Every time you heat up your soup beans, you violate the laws of thermodynamics. I think it's time we rewrite these laws. Have a good day.